And so in the last video, we looked at burning ISO files on Windows using Nero 9. And we downloaded the ISO file for Fedora 11. And we burned it and turned it into a disk. We used the disk to see if it worked well in VirtualBox. Today we'll be doing burning ISO files on a Mac. And this is not the most updated outline. I'm going to have to go in change some of this just cuz we're doing we're going to do a two part on this ISO file burning for a Mac. Now, I have here the Debian 5 ISO file. It's another Linux distribution and uh, you can go ahead and download the Debian ISO file you can go to the Debian us.debian.org and you can go ahead and go to uh, downloads or if you have the you can go to the CD ISO image and go ahead and you want to download the image. Wait, let's go. After doing some clicking around, you'll be able to go ahead and download using the CD images. And you can choose the various images under here, under CD or under DVD. If you're going to burn it to a CD, the ISO file on the CD, Make sure you download one of the CD images. If you're going to download it for a DVD, make sure you have the one for the DVD image. There's also one for Blu-ray, which is uh, quite interesting. So, um, but I would just recommend the CD because it doesn't take that much space, and it's just easier. So we're going we we have the Debian 5 ISO file now by default. Mac OS 10 has a has the ability to burn ISO files. This can be done simply by going to Disk Utility. Open up Disk Utility, and you will see your CD drive here selected. And what you want to do is you want to find the ISO file. You want to open it. Just want to make sure we have everything here. And once it's shown, once you open up the ISO file, it should be listed in this utility. Go ahead and say burn Debian or well, Linux operating system you have, ISO, and it's going to burn the ISO file to the disk. I've already inserted the disk into the uh, super drive here. and this should take a few minutes and we should have the Debian Linux ISO file burned to the disk. Be sure to make sure that the ISO file is shown in disk utility. It's much easier to burn ISO files on Mac because it comes with the ability to burn to create and burn ISO files so it's very uh, nice and cost effective compared to Windows and Debian is another nice Linux distribution it's one of another one of my favorites and you could read about it but just go ahead and search and you want to uh, download the ISO file we can see the process while we're waiting I guess I could discuss another thing most Linux distributions also sell CDs and DVDs now a lot of Linux distributions are free including Debian and the only reason we have this buy CDs or DVDs here is because uh, they sell the actual operating system on CDs 
and they need to actually pay for the disc so you're actually paying for the discs the um, operating system is on and not the operating system itself a lot of individuals ask me why you uh, have to pay for Linux and the truth is you don't you pay for the CD or DVD if you decide to buy it in a disc so we're going to let this continue and once this is done we're going to use VirtualBox again to test the CD and boot up from the live disk and make sure that the ISO file has been successfully burned and let's go to our website and let's discuss what will soon be on the outline after this two part video for the burning of ISO files we'll be discussing a physical installation um, I could show you a physical installation by connecting one of my older PCs and installing Linux on there to show you a physical installation and how to erase windows or partition a disk for windows to install Linux now the only reason I'm discussing a, a physical installation is because it's another method in which you can install operating systems and it's not really necessarily doesn't have much to do with virtualization it isn't virtualization but we'll discuss it and in chapter 2 we'll look into VirtualBox for Windows and do some uh, installation there so the disk image is about to close now and we're going to stop the video here and in the next video we're going to go ahead and test the disk image and make sure that it runs nice